Starting off the news this week, space. At 2033 GMT, Doug Hurley and Bob Benken will lift off from the Kennedy Space Center in NASA's first launch from home soil since 2011. The launch vehicle will be SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket, which will launch their Crew Dragon module to the International Space Station. It marks the first time that a commercial company has done this, and NASA wants to contact all crew transportation to places like ISS to companies, allowing it to focus more on larger projects like returning to the Moon and eventually going to Mars. This milestone has been branded by many to be the start of a new era in spaceflight. Given the reusability of SpaceX's Falcon 9 launch vehicle, it also, importantly, lowers the cost of space travel. Next is some very good news for paleontologists, as recently the Montana Supreme Court ruled that, legally, fossils aren't the same as minerals and should belong to the owners of the land they're found on, not the owners of the minerals under the land. Paleontologists were concerned that counting fossils under mineral rights would make it harder to excavate fossils and to say who legally owned specimens on display, so this is a victory for science. It also specifically applies to the remarkable Montana dueling dinosaurs, possibly one of the most important paleontological finds that has ever been made, but that has been seen by only a handful of people. The specimen apparently preserves a Tyrannosaur and a Ceratopsian locked in combat, and allegedly there are all sorts of soft tissues present, and now thanks to this ruling, it looks like it can be sold to a museum, where it will be studied by scientists, and not lost to a private collection. And now over to Ben, who recently had his wig cleaned. Thanks, Doug. Also in this week's news is the naming and description of a new species of prehistoric avialon, the Juhalornithiform Compsornis longicordus. Discovered in the famous Lower Cretaceous Juhal biota, this new taxon is classified as a close relative of Juhalornis, and is known from an almost complete skeleton. Compsornis is particularly notable in having an entirely fused sternum and pelvis, with this actually being the earliest example of a fused pelvis in the evolution of avian dinosaurs. And finally is some more Spinosaurus news. We're barely even over the hype of the last paper and already there's another very significant development in Spinosaurus paleontology. This new research has looked at the state of Spinosaur taxonomy, finding support for a reassessment of the group that completely changes what was previously known about their diversity. The paper explains how the taxonomy of Spinosaurs in Africa is pretty complicated, with three different potential species being proposed to have lived in the Chemchem group of Morocco, the original Spinosaurus aegyptiarchus, plus Spinosaurus moricanus and Cigelmassosaurus brevicollis. Well, this re-examination of the Spinosaurs has found evidence that actually only one species is valid, Spinosaurus aegyptiarchus, and the other taxa fall within the extent of intraspecific variation in this species. But it doesn't end there. The research also proposes that based on the fossil material that's currently known to science, the Brazilian Spinosaur oxalia should also be included within the single Spinosaurus species. This of course has some fascinating implications for an even larger range of this dinosaur and a faunal exchange between continents. And there's more. The paper also states that Spinosaur teeth aren't particularly helpful in diagnosing species, and therefore suggests that two Spinosaurids only confidently known from teeth Ostafricosaurus from Tanzania and Siamosaurus from Thailand should be regarded as nomina dubia, or doubtful names that might not apply to the specimens. So it's really been the year of Spinosaurus so far, hasn't it? I wonder what's next for this animal. Anyway, thanks for watching this episode of 7 Days- Hey, that's my line. Well, that's it for 7 Days of Science this week. I do hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't already and want to hear more from us. And as always, we'll see you on Sunday.